The mass drop control was a pretty unique keyboard when it was first introduced. One of the main selling points of this keyboard was that it has hot swappable key switches, which was not a very common feature back when it first came out. But times have changed, and we are starting to see hot swappable keyboards hit the mechanical keyboard scene, and some of these keyboards come in at a significantly lower price compared to the mass drop control. So that begs the question, is this keyboard still worth the hefty $200 price tag in 2020? Let's start with the options you get when you are purchasing the control. You can choose from 6 different key switches from Kaihua and Cherry. The Cherry options will set you back another $25 though. There was also another option to order the control as a bare bones keyboard, which means that it will come without keycaps or any key switches. But that has since been removed from the options list. I bought the bare bones kit since I didn't really like the options and I wanted to save some money. So I went to AliExpress to get some Gadron yellows and a set of PBT pudding keycaps. In total, I spent around $188 on my keyboard. The control comes in this very simple and minimalistic box that shows the basic outline of the keyboard and I quite like it. Opening up the box, you will find a simple instruction pamphlet and the keyboard wrapped up in some foam and some other accessories. These accessories include the USB-C cable, a wire style keycap puller, a key switch puller, and two magnetic feet which allows you to incline or decline your keyboard. The look and feel of this keyboard is so clean and industrial, it is the reason I decided to buy this over something like the GMMK. I really like the look and feel of this aluminum case, and it matches so well with all my other things like the monitor stand and my Dell XPS 13. On the perimeter of this keyboard, you will find this LED light strip. The light strip is customizable and it makes this keyboard stand out on your desk. The LED diodes are a little bit too close to the edges though, so the light diffusion is not as smooth as something like the Razer Huntsman Elite, and you can clearly see the individual LEDs running across the sides. Speaking of smoothness, all the LEDs on this keyboard refresh at 100Hz and it is way faster than most, if not all of the keyboards out there. This means that the animations on the control are buttery smooth so you can show off your RGB rainbow wave in all of its glory. So let's move on to the things that I like about this keyboard. Um, the first thing that I absolutely love about this keyboard is the hot swappable key switches. The hot swappable key switches makes it extremely fast and easy for everyone to just swap out the switches for a different one whenever they feel like it. Um, you don't need to desolder and solder all the individual keys every time you want to change the switches. All you need is this little key switch puller. You simply pinch the top and bottom of the switch using the puller and slowly pull out the switch from the socket. Replacing the switch is very easy as well. Just align the switch to the sockets and push it down. Word of caution. Make sure the pins on your switches are straight every time you insert it into the socket. If not, the pins might bend even further or break if too much force is applied. This feature is amazing. It opens up a world of possibilities when it comes to the switches that you can use. See, when I was shopping for a new mechanical keyboard, there were so many different options to choose from. The question I kept repeating in my head was, what switches should I buy? Linear? Tactile? Clicky? Gatoron, Kale, Cherry, then it hit me, why not just buy all of them? Also, instead of going for the usual things like Cherry MX Reds, Gatoron Browns or Kale Box Whites, you can go for more exotic switches that are not offered on typical production boards. Switches like Zilios, Holy Pandas and the gazillion other cool switches. I like linear switches, so I hopped on Reddit and did some research. Worst decision of my life. Secondly, as mentioned earlier, I just really like the design of this keyboard. It looks really clean with its brushed aluminium case, and I think it will go really well with many different setups. In my opinion, the RGB strip around the perimeter is also quite tastefully done. It adds a nice touch of flair to an otherwise really minimalistic case. And if you decide to turn off the perimeter lighting, 
The plastic light diffuser does not look out of place at all unlike some other boards. I'm rocking some PBT pudding keycaps here and honestly I think it looks amazing. The control runs QMT firmware, making it extremely customizable. You can do many things on QMT such as program macros, customize your backlighting and have multiple layers on your keyboard. QMK also runs natively on the keyboard, meaning that you don't have to install any additional blowware on your computer. The basic editor is web-based, so just go into the configurator site, do your thing, download the firmware and flash it on the control. Going through QMK would probably need another video if I were to go through all of its features. Just know that it's very powerful if you were to deep dive into learning it and using it. I've been using this keyboard for a few months now, and I found some annoyances that I would have otherwise missed if I was just looking at the spec sheet or some other YouTube reviews. The biggest thing I dislike about this keyboard is actually the web editor. Yes, I said that the QMK firmware was a thing that I liked about this keyboard because it's very customizable and very powerful. However, that comes at the cost of being significantly harder to edit and program the keyboard to your liking. At first, I thought this keyboard would be pretty simple to program kind of like those Logitech or Corsair boards that have their gaming softwares. But the web editor is actually very sparse in terms of what it can do. For example, if I want to set the RGB lights to scroll between two colours, let's say blue and yellow, I can't. The editor does not give you the option to do that. If you want to customise any animator effect, you have to go through the QMK configurator and type in some code. There is no easy way for you to just use the GUI to configure these things. You can set static colors to individual keys in the mesh drop configurator, and that's about it. And some of you might say, it's no big deal, I don't care about RGB anyways. Okay, get this. You can't set macros using the mesh drop configurator. You simply can't. You still can set macros by going into the QMK configurator and typing in some kind of code. But if you are looking for a gaming keyboard that has a user-friendly GUI to quickly configure things like macros, this is not a bot for you. Just look elsewhere. Second thing I don't like are the stabilizers. Not that they are rattly, which they are, but the stabilizer stem on my keyboard just couldn't keep the key in. The left stabilizer would detach from my spacebar when I'm typing, and I had to push it down every time it decides to do that. In the end, I swapped the left and right stabilizer stems, and it's fine now. So I don't know what's the deal with that, but it kind of shows that the keycap wasn't really the problem. So yeah, hopefully mess drop fixes the quality control on the stabilizers. Third dislike, the PCB. It's ugly. Why is it even like this? I mean, this is a $200 mechanical keyboard. I have seen $5 boards that look better than this. So, who is this keyboard for? I think this keyboard is for people who have money to spend and want to get into the mechanical keyboard hobby thing. When the control first launched, it was one of the only hot swappable keyboards out there, and that was its main selling point. But compared to those cheaper boards, the control still has quite a few features that sets it apart. Namely, the better build quality, smoother RGB lighting, and QMK firmware. Sure, you can get a JMMK or a Techware for significantly less money, but if you're willing to shell out a little more, you do get a little more. If I were to sum up this keyboard with one word, it would be options. You can swap the switches for whatever if you feel like it. You can try out the boutique switches such as Holy Pandas, Zilios, or Bonk switches. You have two USB-C ports so you can route the cable however you want depending on your setup. The keyboard runs QMK, allowing you to customize the backlighting, set macros, customize your layers, or even customize your backlight depending on which layer you're on. I have even configured a numpad mode on my nav cluster. The lights change when I'm in this mode, and now I have a numpad whenever I tap the menu key. You have different choices on the size of the board. There's the 65% alt if you want the desk space. Then there's the control if you need the navigation cluster but you don't want to take up as much space as the full size board. And the upcoming shift, which packs a nav cluster, arrow keys and numpad into a slightly smaller board compared to a full-size board, but with all the functionalities of a full-size board. The included feeds also let you incline or decline the board, so you really have a lot of options when it comes to how you like your keyboard setup. In conclusion, 
I'm really glad I got this board and I would totally buy it again. The price is a little steep, but honestly, this board could last you a lifetime. And that was my thinking when I bought this. I wanted a keyboard that I could not get bored of. If I get bored of the feel of the keys, I can swap out the switches. If I get bored of how it looks, I can change the backlighting or change the keycap. QMK is really powerful as well. Learning how to use it will definitely keep me busy. And really, where do you go from here besides building your own mechanical keyboard? So yeah, that wraps up the review of this board. And please subscribe if you like this video. I'm going to do more content related to this keyboard in the future as well, such as changing the stabilizers, lubing the switches, so on and so forth. Thanks for watching and have a good day.